Welcome to Investing Confidential. As you can see, I'm still down in the South America and Brazil. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to do much today, but I have to, I have to speak out here because this 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 banking thing is just getting out of control. I mean, this banking crisis. Give me a break. I mean, every pundit out there, including a lot of guys on YouTube, gals, whatever, they're predicting a disaster. Oh, the bank, this is... Look, guys, the bank's not the issue. As I told you, this is a sideshow, okay? I have... The more I look at the data, I'm more convinced this whole thing is made up and fake, okay? I mean, it's, it's crazy to say that, but that's the reality, okay? So let's start, all right? We've got... Certainly, we do... The, you know, the, the powers that be have created a crisis of confidence. That's for sure. As we can see, look, everyone is talking about it. Everyone's worried about it. Uh, you know, then you then you see yeah, you see it in the performance of stocks. You know, stocks have been getting killed. Banks, especially regional banks versus the large banks. I mean, this is obvious, this chart, but it, you got to look at it. Uh, overall, bank stocks, they're at a major support level here, okay? If this, if this breaks... Folks, this is these banks are going to go down hard. The entire sector, okay. But then you got, it really doesn't make any sense. Okay, so you had Pacific West Bank last Friday up like eighty percent at some point one day. You know why? Because they lost no deposits. In fact, there's out, there's news out there saying they actually gained deposits. Uh, you know, before I get into why I think this is fake, I want to tell you that the opportunity, there's no huge opportunities now in bank preferreds. Okay, they, these are things that people buy for their pension funds, et cetera. They'd be getting killed. A lot of people are getting scared out of them. Uh, I, I really haven't done it, but they're, they're down so much and the yields are up that I'd be looking at bank preferreds right now, especially the banks that, if you know some of these banks, if you're, if you're, if they're, you know, for example, neighborhood banks, I mean, these banks are not going out of business, folks. They, they, they're not losing deposits like everyone says they are. And deposits are guaranteed, so there's no risk on these things. Now, if the stocks go down, maybe the common equity, but the preferreds are going to be worth par. Okay, so take a look at bank preferreds. I think they're the things no one's talking about, and you've got to take a look at them. So let's look at why, this, why I think this is a sideshow and fake. Okay, here's the Fed window. Fed window usage, like last week, nobody was using the Fed window, okay? That means there's no, there, there was no run on deposits because they weren't, they weren't, you know, get, going into the Fed window and replenishing, okay? But, you know, let's look at what F the Fed fund window is. Okay, let's do a little teach in here and, you know, what alternatives are for banks? There's a lot, okay? And this is, this I got from AI. This is AI generated, and I'm gonna read it to you right now. There is no limit to how much banks are allowed to borrow from the Fed window, okay? As we spoke before, and as I'm gonna tell you now, okay, sure, there's certain conditions, but the Fed window is there to, to give banks liquidity. So, to, so when you have situations like this, where people are, are running for their money, Okay, a bank can go to the Fed window, borrow from the Fed at a certain rate, and pay people out. Okay, this was created to obviously stop these bank runs and, and, and calm the people down. Okay, why isn't the government saying, I don't know, it's, but it's there. It's, it's their freaking mechanism. This is insanity what's going on. Okay, so again, the Fed window is being used for banks to meet liquidity. That's the last sentence in the first paragraph. Uh, sudden, such as when, again, this is written, this is written by AI, not some Wall Street analyst or anybody else. This is, this is the fact. This is the reality, okay? Now, there are different types of credit that the central bank, that the Fed offers, okay? First is primary credit. This is available to all, as you can see, I'm just going to read off, all institutions, okay? Of, okay, here's the key sentence here. Sound financial condition. Now, the... Last, you know, the, the Pacific West Bank was in sound financial condition. Okay, there wasn't any problems with the bank. They could have gone to, they, they could go to the Fed window and borrow as much money as they need. Okay, secondary credit is available to all financial institutions, but uh, that are not eligible. So, for example, if you have a bank, like let's say 
Silicon Valley Bank, okay, I don't understand why they didn't use this, but they had this facility available to them. They didn't use it, okay? Don't understand why they didn't use it. Then there's seasonal credit available to, again, depository institutions that are experiencing temporary liquidity problems. In, in, in parentheses, temporary liquidity problems. Folks, what I'm telling you here is the Fed introduced these mechanisms to prevent all of this. There's no, there's, for, and, and then Yellen guaranteed all the damn deposits. So for, for, for anyone to be worried, okay, about their deposit at bank, they shouldn't be. But the powers that be, and I'm talking about Wall Street, I'm talking about the, 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 the political class, they're doing this for a reason. And I told you again, I, I, I know why. They want the Fed to cut. This is the bottom line. So you've got all of these things that the banks can use for liquidity. And yet, every, every day, CNBC and the Wall Street, oh, we're talking about bank runs, bank runs, the bank. I mean, guys, this is a joke. They want the Fed to cut. They are, and they're going to force the Fed to cut. Okay, Look at Fed fund futures. This is, again... People, the expectations of what the Fed's going to do, they're right in front of your eyes, folks. They're looking at rates pummeling from the current levels. They think the Fed's going to cut. Okay, so who's going to win? Okay, is Wall Street going to win? You know what, folks? Probably. But that means we all lose. If Wall Street wins and they allow the Fed, they push the Fed because of these fake bank failures, and scare the Fed into cutting rates at some point soon, we all gonna lose because inflation is not going down. Okay, the Fed, the most, and this is why I, I think Powell hasn't been as, as, as dovish as he'd like to be. Here, here's what the Fed looks at. The most important thing the Fed looks at is wage pressure. And, and you could see here, their wage pressure is still very strong. Okay, this fake unemployment rate. I don't know, understand why they keep rolling this out, but you know, you can't cut rates with an unemployment rate this low. And this is what the Fed's looking at. So what this what this all means is that credit, credit to people is gonna is gonna continue to be tight. It's tight now, and it's gonna continue to be tight. There's gonna be a limited amount of mortgages because the mortgage rate's so high. Businesses, small business loans are gonna be cut. Uh, and credit's going to get tighter. This is really bad for an economy that's, that's in recession and slipping into a deeper recession. But Wall Street wants this, folks, and I'm going to show you why right here. Look at this. This is obvious what's going on, but again, some of the papers are picking this up. There's a massive increase in shadow banks right now. What are shadow banks? That's just essentially Wall Street, private equity funds, even venture capital funds doing direct lending. They make a ton of money. You know why they're doing it? Because hedge funds can't make a return on the market. PE funds can't invest the money. And VCs are getting killed. So they're going to start doing direct lending. And they make big profits. Okay, Banks lend. Maybe they charge 5%. These hedge funds are charging 8 9 10%. Okay? And they use other people's money. right? So there's a, there's a boom, a, a bust, or the bubble, which there is going to be a bubble. And everything crashes. It's not their money that gets lost. Okay, So the shadow banking system... Is going is 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 growing fast and is going to explode. And this is what these guys want. They want a fake banking crisis. They want the Fed to cut and they want to take over for the banks and increase their own credits. Okay, but this is all going to blow up in everyone's face because we are looking at 100% recession probability. In fact, it's more than 100% because we're in it today. The year close. No one's paying attention to this. These, if you look at and I do still have access to a lot of these Wall Street researchers. These guys are in the clouds. They're, 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 I don't know what the problem is, but they're out of their minds. And this is typical. Okay, this is conflict of interest. That's why no one cares about Wall Street research anymore. Okay, and it's, uh, you know, here's another thing. So the pundits are saying we had a good earnings season. Right, good earnings season. Well, I don't understand if good earnings season when the bottom line is the fact is that mentions on earnings calls of weak demand is the highest in very long, in, in, in decades. These are CEOs saying demand is weakening, demand is weakening. So how do we have a good earnings season? And there's something wrong here, folks, because you look at GDP.
which is declining fast. And then you look at Wall Street earnings expectations. This is impossible. You cannot have everyone, all earnings going up when we're running into recession. So, so again, you have to be very careful. Okay, if you have a bank account or one of these Morgan Stanley, one of these banks, Charles Schwab, you, just got, you can't pay attention to what they tell you. Okay, because look, we just had the largest rate rise in history, in, in recorded history. Okay, it's not normal. You don't just come out of this willy-nilly. The implications are going to be on, on the economy are going to be tough. And I've been telling, I've been saying this from day one. Okay, and then you got people, credit card, this is insane. We talked about some credit card balances over the over a trillion. People are living off credit cards, and especially young people. And this is not good. Nobody's listening to anybody. Okay, back to the market. Okay, some some bear some bearish hedge funds are not short, but right, folks, that's not that's not bullish. That means they're long. They're they're everything long. They got no. I used to be a hedge fund manager. This to me is an incredible bearish. Uh, data, because hedge funds, I gotta tell you, they're no longer smart money. They're no longer smart money. So the fact that they're not short is to tell us to me that the market is bearish. But again, as we spoke about previous, the positioning is very bearish. So who the hell knows? But but I'm telling you right now, this is not a bullish sign. Okay, but this is the reality. U.S. stocks. Okay, are very expensive versus alternatives, meaning international stocks. I've been saying this. You've got to you've got to look at that. Okay, you, you don't U.S. stocks right now are not a buy, based on earnings, based on valuations. I'm going to mention one last thing. People get all excited when people mention gold, but here's here's the number one reason to buy gold. Okay, number one reason. Here is central banks, as we know, have been purchasing recently, the first of the year. They they drove the price up. But look at historical, from a historical perspective, they are the most under-allocated they've been in a quite a long time, even with the big, big purchases in the first quarter. They have a long way to go. And if, you, if you're watching what's going on with the dollar, with the, the, the whole thing with the Chinese yuan and the Russian oil, this is the end. We're seeing the end of fiat currency. Okay, the dollar's not going to lose its, you know, its status. But all these currencies are going to have problems because of commodities and inflation, 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 inflation. They're just printing lots of money. Look what's going on in the, in, in the U.S. right now. They're talking about the debt ceiling. They're going to print their way out of that. That's all they're going to do. So gold is something you have to be positioning in your portfolio. And if you're an investor, with all these, all this talk of banking crisis, well, there really isn't, but they're going to make one. So be very careful out there.